Ever since I first heard Klezmer, I've loved it and wanted to play it. One of the first British bands to inspire me were Klezmer Club, a London bass group who've been playing together for over 20 years. This film is about them. It's about Klezmer. And it's about what it's like to make a film. The tricky thing is, I've never made a film before, and there's so much to remember and so much to learn. So I've made lists. I've got my to-do list, my what not to do list, my technical checklist, and my interview questions. So let's go. Uh, well, um, I, I, I don't really know what Kesner is, but... Uh, uh, I'll tell you what I say, which is probably not right. Which is it is Eastern European Jewish street music, but it's not just street music. I was always been a bit confused about the origins of it all. I mean, I always thought, uh, is it is it solely Jewish music, Klezmer music, or is it all sort of gypsy and Eastern European? It was Jewish it music, but it, was, it was Jewish music. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, but it was. it was played often in mixed jack, mixed bands. Right. The word Klezmer is actually it's a Yiddish stroke Hebrew word. It comes from two Hebrew words. Um, Kale and Zemel and Kali, which it comes from, it means a vessel, and Zemel it means a song, and so it means an instrument. So the word klezma is actually an instrument, and it became to be called the musician. So the old words, the klezmorim, were the musicians. No, no, it's a marketing device. There's no such thing as klezma. It's Yiddish music from Eastern Europe, which went to different parts of the world when the Jews went to different parts of the world, and the word klezma for music was a marketing device. Hey, when we revive this Yiddish music, we need a little ticket, we need a little thing. Where can we put it in Virgin? Where can we put it in HMV? We'll call it Klezma. Klezma is Jewish music for Simkas. That's, I suppose that's it in a nutshell is what it is. A Simka is a celebration. <laughs> celebration that the, the music was used for um, was weddings. Um, but there's bar mitzvahs, there's bat mitzvahs, there's whatever excuse in life you need for a celebration, there would be some music. It was for the great events in people's lives. So the weddings and the bar mitzvahs and the big parties. Mm. It marked the passage of time in a traditional sort of way. And so it would have its sad moments and its joyous moments, as life does. Being honest, the interviews I've filmed so far have been lots of fun, but technically rather ropey. I've put people too close to plants, framed them badly, failed to notice them move, not to mention the lighting. Still, I've been doing some research, and things can only get better. When did it start? Well, early 90s, just sort of 91 or something like that. 1991, yeah, something yeah, like that. Know, about 20 years ago. It was about, a 20, long time ago. about 20 years ago. Right now, uh, the band is uh, Gabriel on accordion, and uh, me on uh, mandolin and a little bit of clarinet. Uh, Caroline on trombone and Julia on double bass, Simon on drums, John on clarinet and Vivian on vocals and dancing. Like Irish music a bit, it can be meditative and quite a bit sad. 
um, or a bit sad, not necessarily and. Uh, it, it can also be quite raucous dance music. I love playing for dancers. Because yeah. it is dance music. It's quite repetitive. And yeah. so if people can engage with the music by dancing, then you get into this very idea, which is at the heart of Klezmer, of a kind of unity between the players and the music and the audience. Well, there's a ball guy and the horror. We do chosset dances. We do. Chosset dances? Yeah. Shares. Shares. Freylax and shares are pretty close. Uh, Freylax, of course. Freylax. The bulga became the most popular of the Yiddish dances in New York. And so in the interwar period, bulga became almost like horror, as in the general word for <laughs> Jewish dance. Um, but it's the, it's the dance with the, it's the fast circle dance with the cross rhythms. That's the, the classic bulga rhythm. There's um, Hora, which is a circle dance, um, which is in with sort of three time or almost five times. It's got, it's got a limp to it, it's got a sort of slight lurch within the three beats. Doiners, which are um, a sort of that's almost improvised, but actually people, it's it's worked out before, but it's got a sort of improvisatory feel to it, and they were used to make people cry at weddings, so to sort of symbolise the loss of moving from your family to a new family, I suppose. You know, the sadness contained within it. The lead instrument, whether it's the um, violin or clarinet, or whatever is the lead instrument, plays a kind of plaintive, semi-improvised, so I know the shape of my doina, but I don't necessarily know every note I'm going to play in it or every ornament I'm going to use or anything. And the rest of the band provide a chordal accompaniment, quite simple, one chord goes along, you improvise over the top, and it's kind of unmetered, it's, there's not a sense of a beat going along that you'd clap along to. By this point, things were going much better. Once the technical side had become more natural, I'd finally started to engage properly with my interviewees. What I had left to do was to film the 21st anniversary celebrations of a synagogue in West London. This was by far the biggest challenge, and certainly the most exciting. Thank you. 
I really like the fact that it seems to be a folk music that has um, still has a real vibrant and living place in its community. I can remember one, um, I think it's probably a bar mitzvah at the liberal, the liberal synagogue um, in St John's Wood Road. We were playing in the lobby for a guest to arrive and old couples, literally not just one, but two or three, dance their way into the building. And you know, that, that side of how it really moves people, literally and, and emotionally, um, and taps into something very strong for them and very you know, culturally resonant. And there's something very, very Jewish in there. A kind of each in his own space with the others, which is a parallel with the form of Jewish prayer. If you go to a church, it will be says the same words at the same time during the hymns of prayer. If you go to a synagogue, we're all on the same prayer, but we're actually in a slightly different part of the prayer. And it's also the same way that we play jazz well, because we don't have to be exactly on the same note, on the same beat. There is this thing of coming together at crucial moments and diverging into an individual space within the entity, and that I love as well. Klezmer Club's passion for Klezmer is definitely something I share and it's been great to learn more about it. Making a film for the first time has had its challenges, but whilst the learning curve's been steep, it hasn't turned out too badly. I think the next film I make about Klezmer might be quite good. Mm -hmm.